Welcome to In Her Voice. My name is Kelly Covert, and I am passionate about helping women live authentically by listening to their inner voice. Get ready to be inspired by women of all walks of life that have set aside their should be's and not good enoughs and are standing in their true voice, the voice of wisdom that each and every one of us has inside. Hello friends, welcome to In Her Voice. This is episode 30 and I am Kelly Covert, an inner voice coach and your host and guide today as we talk with Holly Wharton on Mindset. I first met Holly in a podcasting mastermind we are both in called the E-League with Elsie Escobar and we immediately hit it off. Like I just knew she was a woman after my own heart, just by some of the the things that she was talking about and some of the things that she was saying. And then I started following her on Instagram and she lives in England and she walks these beautiful walks every weekend. And I just, just fell in love with her. And I know that you will too. And she also had me on her podcast, the business mindset podcast to talk about using your inner voice to really stand out online. So I'll link to that in the show notes for this episode. Holly Wharton is an author, podcaster, and business mindset coach for women entrepreneurs. She works with women who are feeling stuck and frustrated with their business because they're struggling to fully step into their highest potential as entrepreneurs. Holly helps them release their fear of visibility, set aligned prices for their products and services, and take easy, inspired action to grow their business. And this is the thing. It's usually not lack of business or marketing knowledge that holds us back in business. That's all easy to learn, right? It's our mindset that stops us from creating the business we really want. If you've ever struggled with self-confidence, self-esteem, or even setting prices that reflect your true value, Holly can help you. There's a fast and easy way to move past the fears, blocks, and limiting beliefs towards your vision of your ideal business. I just totally love what she has to say about mindset and what she has to say about doing the deep work, the deep work of our soul. And she shares a lot of really intimate and transparent stories about her own life and the process that she has had to go through to get to this place where she is intimately connected with her inner voice. So sit back, relax, and enjoy this interview with the amazing Holly Wharton. Welcome, Holly Wharton, to In Her Voice. I'm so excited that you're here with me today. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. Excellent. So today our theme is mindset, and this is really your specialty. You work primarily with um, women, entrepreneurs, business owners, but I really feel like mindset goes so much beyond that. So I thought that's where we could start today with this idea of just maybe you giving us an idea of what you mean by mindset and why it matters. Mm. Yeah, I think you have a really good point in saying that it definitely goes beyond business. And a lot of times I'll have clients show up to a session and and say, well, I know we're supposed to be working on business, but I've got this problem with my partner. Uh, can we work on that? And of course we do, because everything is related. So, so as you said, mindset definitely goes beyond business. All aspects of our lives are related. Mindset permeates all aspects of our lives. So to me, when I talk about mindset, I'm talking about the specific set of beliefs, limiting beliefs and supporting beliefs, fears, blocks, all the stuff you've going on in your mind, mind chatter, whether it's positive or negative, all the stuff that is either supporting you in your journey or hindering you. And Ideally, we want to start kind of decluttering and clearing the stuff that's not supporting us and not helping us so that we can have a mindset that supports us as we move towards our goals. Mm, what well, Very well said. That's beautiful. And so my question is, can you describe the difference, if there is any, between mindset and inner voice or intuition? Oh, such a good question. Um, I think intuition 
forms a part of your mindset. And this is really interesting because I wrote a book last year called Business Intuition, and it talked about how to tap into your intuition, how to turn up the volume on it, and how to use it in your business. And I remember writing at the very, I think it was the introduction to the book, I'm not really sure how intuition fits into mindset, but I think it's a part of it. So I do think that listening to your inner voice or listening to that intuition or your higher self or whatever you call it, I think that's definitely a part of your mindset, but it's also an integral part of who you are because it's the voice of your higher self. It's the voice of your soul. It's the voice of your deep, deep, deep inner self. And I think it's so powerful and so important to listen to that inner voice so that you can be on board with that in following its messages and and taking its advice for how you want to live your life. Right. It's almost like you have to listen to that inner voice and use that to create your mindset. Yes, exactly. I think that's I think that's probably one of the best places to come from when you're looking at what kind of mindset you need because if you are aware of your inner voice and if you are aware of that higher self and if you want to create a business and a lifestyle and a life that's aligned with what your higher self wants and you really need to start listening to that inner voice to help guide you along your path. So in your book, Business Intuition, it's funny that you brought that up because I I went through the whole list of books and that was the one that really stuck out to me. (laughs) And my question is, how do you teach women? How do you, Holly, teach women how to listen to that? Well, there are so many ways. And I, I recognize the fact that different people are going to be drawn to different ways of listening to their intuition and really turning up that volume, but it really comes down to making the time and the space to listen. So decluttering your mind, if you're the kind of person who has all of your to-do lists and their calls and all your stuff you have to do in your mind, clear that out of your mind. So one of the things that I blogged on years ago, and I've mentioned it many times over the years, is what I call a mind decluttering meditation. And it's where you just sit down with your pen and paper pretend to meditate in the sense that you kind of sit down, you calm your mind, you try to clear your mind. But then when all of that stuff comes up, you write it down, you stop, you write it down, you get it out of your mind onto a piece of paper. And then once you're done with that mind decluttering meditation, you get all that stuff into your system. So it gets done, but you clear it out of your mind. Because if you're holding all of that stuff in your mind, I have to make this phone call and then I have to do that and I have to do this other thing. It's taking up so much bandwidth and, and it's creating this kind of mental clutter that really inhibits those messages from your inner voice to come through. So I think decluttering and clearing that stuff is, is really, really important. I think it's an important first step. But like I said, it's about making the time and space. So whether it's taking five minutes a day or 10 minutes or whatever you have to just calm down and sit and connect with yourself and not focus on all the things you need to be doing, but rather just let that space appear so that you can listen to that voice when it comes through. And I think one of the important things as well is taking action on the advice from your inner voice when it does come through, either writing it down or recording it or taking action on it or putting it into your system to take action on. Because I find that the more you tell your voice that you trust it and that you're taking action on the stuff that it's telling you to do, the kind of, it's like the volume turns up on it. And it's so much easier to hear those messages because it's like you're trusting yourself. And so the messages come through more and more clearly. Oh my gosh. There's, there's just so much. Okay. We we could be done now (laughs) because that's it. Everything's right there. Um, (laughs) Okay. So one thing at a time, your decluttering meditation, you called it. Mm -hmm. I teach a very similar, basically exactly the same thing. um, And I call it clearing space. And in my five day journaling program, which is free on my website, you guys can go check it out that are listening. Day one is this exact thing, clearing space. And I think that it is so important, especially if you're like me. And I feel like the inside of my brain is a hot mess all of the time. (laughs) If I'm not, if I'm not taking care of that, if I'm not giving myself the time to do that. And so I think that that's so cool because I feel like we're really connected in that feeling, even of that exercise. Mm -hmm. So 
Then the next thing though, is this idea of taking action on what your inner voice tells you to do. I like to liken this to building a muscle, right? Mm -hmm. So if if you're going to the gym and you're lifting weights and you do it more and more and more, you're going to get stronger and stronger and stronger. And it becomes easier to pick up the weight that you started with. That's Mm -hmm. easy after you do it for a month or whatever. So it's really about building that muscle. And I, I agree that you get to a point where you may not have to clear that space as often because your inner voice is taking up more of that room all of the time. Don't you think? Yes, yes, I completely agree. And I first started doing this kind of clearing and making the space probably about 10, 11 years ago when I joined the spiritual group that I belong to where I, for the first time, I started doing this mental exercise every day that's kind of like meditation. And I developed the mind decluttering meditation because I couldn't do my proper meditation without getting the stuff out of my head first. And I found that the more I get the stuff out of my head, the easier it is to get into the habit of as soon as something pops into my mind, I get it in the system. So I don't have to do that decluttering meditation as often. I rarely do it these days because I've trained my brain to just get the stuff in the system. Right. So you have in your coaching business, you have developed your own technique of helping women release their limiting beliefs, really working with energy to get into a mindset that's going to help them. And I'm really interested in you telling us the story of that process of listening. I mean, really what you did was you listened to your inner voice and you took major, huge, brave action. Can you talk us through what that felt like for you? Yes. That that's, this is an excellent story in the value of listening to that inner voice because channeling this process required so much trust, so much trust in myself, so much trust in my inner voice and trust in taking the first step, even though I couldn't see any of the other steps on the path. So I used to use another technique to reprogram beliefs at the subconscious level. And that was how I worked with my entrepreneurial clients. And it was a fantastic technique. And I'd used it for years with myself. It got great results. But I started to feel like I needed something of my own. And in a session with my business coach, that came up as well. My, my guides spoke up and they said, look, you need to you need to be aware that you're going to be creating your own technique and just kind of pay attention to what you like, what you don't like about how you currently work with people so that you can develop your own thing. And that was kind of in the back of my mind throughout all of last year until it got to the point where I really, I was ready for it. I was ready to step into it. And it just required making the space, like I literally had to sit, get out of my office, get out of my normal working space, sit on my bed and just listen. And it was so uncomfortable because I didn't know what was coming through. I didn't know what, I didn't know what was coming, but I knew that I was going to kind of receive this download of information that I would be channeling that would eventually become this technique that I work with now, heart-centered energy work. And I just sat there and I felt drawn to put my hands together and envision this ball of energy in my hands. And I was like, what the heck is that? Okay, I'll just do it. And so I did it. And and as I was doing that, it was like the next step came through. And I was like, okay, I guess I'll do that. And then as I was doing that, the next step came through. And eventually, and I just made notes after each session. And eventually, over the course of five days, it came together in this very clear and distinct process. But it came from having that trust that I would just do the one thing, even though it made absolutely no sense to me. And then the next step came through. So it was a massive, massive lesson in trusting that inner voice. And I think what I'm feeling too is not, it wasn't only trust, but it was also this idea of surrender. Yes. Because as women, as high achievers, recovering perfectionist, I feel that It's like we have to know every step of the plan from here to five years from now. And that if things aren't going to plan, we're failing. Mm. And so how did you reach that point of being okay with that? Of okay with not knowing what the next step was? I think it just, 
you know, I had a couple of sessions with my, my regular business coach and then with another friend who's a business coach who all work with channeling spirit guides and that kind of thing. And so they're tapped into the same kind of energies that I like to work with. And they both said, you need to make the time and the space to just do it. And you need to sit and just record what happens and just listen to what comes in. So I think having that support of people telling me, you need to just be okay with it and just go with whatever comes to you. That was helpful. But I think it was just, I was just so desperate and so needing to bring this thing into the world that it was like, I I guess I'm going to have to find a whole new way of doing things. So if I need to just trust, I will just trust and I will surrender and I will just receive it as it comes. Mm. So I feel like it's almost was a yearning, like your yes. soul was yearning so for that. Much. And I think that so many of us feel that. And I would like to talk about so, sort of the emotions that that brings up, mm -hmm. especially when that first begins, because I feel like it's not always a positive feeling inside of our bodies, that yearning. It may start as struggle or may start as suffering almost mm -hmm. in a way. So can you speak into that for you? I think for me, it was discomfort more than anything. Because like I said, I've been using this other technique for years and loved it. And I was its biggest fan and singing its praises to the world. And I loved it for so long, but it got to the point where it was really uncomfortable. Like I knew it wasn't right for me anymore. And that it saddened me because I had loved this thing so much and it, it confused me. And it was just this feeling of just icky discomfort because I knew something new was coming, but I didn't know what it was. I didn't know when it was coming. And I was falling out of love with this thing that I had loved for so long. And it was such an integral part of my business and my life and just every aspect of my being. So it was just massive discomfort as I was beginning to tap into that yearning for this new thing. Right. And I think it's so important to highlight that those emotions, being uncomfortable, being sad, feeling confused mm. that you're not in love with the thing that you used to be in love with. I think these are all emotions that all of us can identify with. Mm -hmm. And I think that the key is when those start to come up, instead of just feeling sad and just feeling uncomfortable and just feeling confused, get curious yeah. about why you're feeling that way. And that's the moment that you go into your inner voice and you ask, mm -hmm. what is this all about? Yeah. <laughs> And I, I think that I really want women who are listening to this to feel empowered by the negative emotions that we have. I mean, like it's, we're not always going to feel like happy unicorns floating in the sky all of mm. the time. And when that stuff comes up, get curious about why mm -hmm. and commit to understanding what your soul is trying to tell you in this uncomfortable spot. Mm -hmm. And give yourself permission to feel that uncomfortable, icky feeling, because if you try to sweep it under the rug and shove it down and forget about it, you're not going to be able to open yourself up to doing this work that you mentioned. Right. Yeah. Because it's scary. Mm, yeah. 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 And it's going to be uncomfortable. So we have to get used to feeling that way. Mm -hmm. Uncomfortable can be a muscle that we practice too. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you developed your process in over the course of five days mm -hmm. and then you had to put it out into the world, mm -hmm. which is a completely different thing that you're having to do, a different way of trusting, a different kind of courage. Can you talk to us about that? Yes, of course. Well, so I, by the end of those five days, I developed, you know, the core of the process, but then I had to experiment with myself because <laughs> before I took it out to other people, I had to really try it out on myself and see, did it work? How did it work? And so I did that over the course of a couple of weeks and then I put it out there to a couple of friends and I said, you know, I have my new thing. It's finally ready. Can I try this with you? I tried it with them. They loved it. So I put a call out to my private Facebook group and I said, I have five sessions for people to practice with because I want, I need to try this with different people. Five people signed up. It was fantastic. They got great results. So it was like, I kind of built that muscle as you were saying, like 
s gradually tr tried it with myself, tried it with good friends, tried it with other people that I knew but less. And then finally I got to the point where I was ready to le release it out into the world and offer it to the general public. And to do that, I actually sent it out with a two for one offer and said, you know, two sessions for the price of one. I know this is a big gamble. This is a new technique. You've never heard of it because it didn't exist until a couple months ago. Um, but I would love to you know, play around with this with you. And so I had amazing response to that. It was just absolutely fantastic. People had been thinking about working with me for months, years in some cases, but never had, signed up immediately. I've had fantastic response to this process, which is very, very, very different from the process I used to work with. So I think it's appealing to a different group of people. Mm -hmm. So let's bring this back around to the idea of mindset. Yeah. What did you have to do in terms of mindset work in order to bring this out into the world? What sort of daily practices were you doing? Or did you have mantras? Or what did that look like? So by the time I had developed this new technique, I started working exclusively with myself using this new technique to shift my mindset. So I started becoming aware of limiting beliefs that I had, started becoming aware of what I did need to believe about myself in order to launch this into the world, who I needed to be, what things I needed to do, what my blocks were. So just started making notes of all of the stuff. And then I started using my process to work through those things. Mm -hmm. And I love hearing you talk about doing the work. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> because I think sometimes it's easy to believe that we can just think a new thought mm. and that it will stick <laughs> and that it will be there. But it really does require us to do deep work or soul work, as yeah. Michelle Duncan Wilson calls it. It's about committing to that and mm -hmm. saying, I'm worth it. I deserve to give this to myself. Mm -hmm. How do you work on worthiness? for you, mm -hmm. like the good enough. How do you get into that place of saying, I deserve to give this to myself. This is something I need, something I deserve. Well, that worthiness has been one of my biggest mindset issues that I've worked on over the last few years. And it's not surprising that the clients that I attract, that's kind of one of the biggest things too. So that is a big, big topic for me. So Whenever I see issues of worthiness rearing their heads, I just kind of look into it and figure out what it is that I need to do, and I do the mindset work on it. So for example, about three or four weeks ago, a good friend of mine and I went on a silent retreat, just the two of us. We kind of created this retreat for us. And the fact that we were in this place in silence for a weekend brought up in such a massive way my feelings of unworthiness in the most ridiculous ways. And I ended up writing a blog post called um, something like My Celery is Good Enough and other things that I learned from my silent retreat because it was so ridiculous that I we were cooking for each other. And I thought at one point that my celery wasn't good enough because it wasn't organic and that she she was going to feel you know, offended or bad or something because I hadn't brought organic celery. I just brought normal celery. So it, it was just so fascinating the way that retreat brought up all of those different aspects of unworthiness. And it was fantastic because it gave me so much more material to work on with my mindset stuff and mm -hmm. to actually do the work after the weekend was over. So I am so glad that you brought up that blog post because I read it before we got on and I had already written that down. <laughs> Silent retreat, my celery is good enough. Um, because I think that it, it's so interesting to me that these are the things that came up for you when you got quiet, mm -hmm. when you got silent. And for women, I think so many of us are filling our days with busy, 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 doing, 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 not giving us time to get quiet. Mm -hmm. And I wonder if that's because we're scared yeah, of what we might on. hear, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And so how do, how do you move past that fear of being scared to get to the place of knowing that the stillness is what is required? Well, I spent the last probably four years digging through all of my Minecraft to, <laughs> to dig to the deep, dark stuff. So I love delving through the dark stuff. Um, so for me, this was the silent retreat was a fantastic opportunity to allow the time and space and the silence for that stuff to surface. 
I think it's just, it's again, it goes back to flexing that muscle and building that muscle of just being willing, ready, willing, and able to look at the hard stuff, the difficult stuff, the icky stuff, the uncomfortable stuff, the scary stuff, and just be willing to look at that stuff on a regular basis and then do the work to clear it. Because I think once you start that path of clearing that stuff, you see that you're not stuck with it forever. You can just easily clear it out and just move on with your life. So it makes it really appealing to look that stuff in the face because you know you can just clear it out. Yeah, you're answering my questions before I even ask them. <laughs> <laughs> because I wrote down, what would you say to someone who is afraid who is afraid of doing the work? Why is it worth it? I mean, and that's exactly what you said. It's worth it because all of a sudden you're feeling the way you want to feel. Yes. You're connected with your authentic self, with who you are. You have this strong voice that's guiding you. And that feels really, really good. Mm, it does. And I, for many, many years, I lived totally disconnected from my inner self, from my inner voice, just completely off course. And, and for the last, I would say, nine years, I've been working on getting back to myself. And it's been a massive journey. And I think... It's really hard to say to someone who's completely disconnected from themselves the value of doing this work and just how life-changing in such an amazingly beautiful way it is, but this is the most important work I've done in my life, is helping myself get back to being connected with myself and being connected to that inner voice and, and hearing that inner voice because it's so disorienting and so confusing when you don't have it. Mm. And life is so much easier when you do. Yeah. So take us back. Take us back 10 years where you were living completely disconnected from that. What what made you realize this has got to change? Well, I think it goes back even farther. So I have high-functioning autism, which used to be called Asperger's. So for my entire life, I felt like I didn't fit in. I felt like something was wrong with me. I felt like I was weird. I felt like I was from another planet. So I spent my entire life from young, young childhood acting like someone else. And I, because I wanted to fit in. So it was like I built up this whole personality trying to be neurotypical. And I spent most of my life pretending to be someone I wasn't because I just wanted to fit in like everyone else seemed to. Um, so that got me off on the wrong foot, that's for sure. And then the more I pretended to be this other person, the harder it was to be in touch with myself. And I think it really culminated in my first business that I ran from 1999 to 2009 um, with a business partner who was very different from me. We have very different values, very different beliefs. And I just felt like I was constantly agreeing to decisions or making decisions that were totally unaligned with myself, totally unaligned with my values. And it got to the point where I didn't know who I was, what was going on, but I knew it all felt so, so wrong. And it just got to the point where I just, I think I hit rock bottom and I ended up leaving, my business partner was my ex-husband, left my ex-husband, year later, less than a year later, left the business. And that was when I started this journey of healing and of reconnecting with myself. So I think it was just really hitting that low, low, dark, dark, dark spot <laughs> before I was able to bounce back out of it and, and start doing the work to get to where I am today. Mm -hmm. Sometimes that's what it takes, mm. right? Sometimes it takes getting to the place that you feel like you might not be able to get out of. Yeah to struggle, um, to struggle so intensely and hurt so badly that you think I've, something has to change. Mm -hmm. But I also believe it, it, that's not required. I, I completely agree with you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I think I say that because I want everyone listening to know that if you haven't had that moment, you don't have to. No. That, that you don't can start this work now. <laughs> exactly. Don't wait for that dark day <laughs> where you're not sure if you're going to be able to get out of bed again because you can start the work now. You can start this work of clearing space and getting connected with what your inner voice is saying and changing your mindset. Mm -hmm. This part that you shared with us about being 
on the autism spectrum and having Asperger's. My my oldest son also is diagnosed with Asperger's, super high functioning. So this is super interesting to me on a personal level because I see him with that struggle of wanting to fit in, yet knowing that he doesn't. Yeah. And I think that we can take that, you know, to a bigger viewpoint that at some point we all feel that way. Mm. We are all in that place of wanting to be loved, wanting to be accepted and being someone we're not in order to do that. Mm -hmm. So how do we return to who we truly are? I think it comes from, again, making that time and space to listen to your inner voice and to start recognizing what brings you joy, what do you love, what do you not love, and start letting go of the things that don't serve you, start letting go of the things that don't make you happy, and start focusing on the things that do. And the more you kind of guide yourself by that inner compass of feelings, like, okay, this is good, this feels good, this doesn't, the more you get back on track and the more you make that space to listen to your inner voice, the more it will start coming through. So I think if you're not hearing your inner voice and if you feel really disconnected from that, and if you feel like you don't belong anywhere, really just go guide yourself by feeling what feels good, what doesn't, and then just kind of gradually get back on track with that. Mm -hmm. And I think that this is a good opportunity to go back to what you were talking about in the development of your new technique. You asked for support. Mm -hmm. This is not something that we have to do alone. No. The work is something that we alone have to do, Mm -hmm. but you can ask for help with that. You can ask for that emotional strength and that you know, sounding board from people that you trust or hiring a coach that you know really resonates with you. And so I think that there's so much value in listening to a woman like you who's been practicing this for 10 years Mm -hmm. and you still say, I I talked with my coach. I asked my friends to support me. Yeah. I I am very it's very, very important for me to surround myself with the kind of people who can support me in this stuff and support me in doing the deep work. And professionals that can support me as well. So I've got all of my go-to people that I reach out and get in touch with when I do need that support. Mm -hmm. I like to call it your support crew. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Because we need it. We need it in so many areas of our life. I mean, you guys that are listening, you may not be a business owner, but maybe you're a parent. Mm -hmm. And you need the support crew to help you move through through that or whatever it is that your career or your purpose is. So, Mm -hmm. And you can also benefit from that external perspective because when you're stuck in your head all day, you don't have any other perspective from your own perspective. So by bringing this to the table with someone else, whether it's a professional or, you know, someone else who can do this kind of work with you, you're getting that other perspective that can help you shift your mindset, shift your vision. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's so important. I have a question for you Mm -hmm. that I, I started asking my guests because I think it's very interesting to the topic of what we're talking about. But what is your inner voice, Holly Wharton, Mm -hmm. saying to you right now? Okay. Give me just a second and I will tap in. The word connect is coming to me. It's about connecting with people in situations like this, whether it's having conversations on a podcast or connecting with just people who are like-minded people who we can have these deep conversations with. I love having these kinds of conversations with people. So, so I think I perhaps need to bring more of that into my life and business. So connect and have the deep, deep conversations. Mm, I love having these kind of conversations too. <laughs> it's, it feels in so many ways self-indulgent for me because I get so much out of it, but I know that the people who are listening are also learning and being mm. inspired and motivating, motivated by you and, and all of our guests to really do the work. Mm-hmm. Yep. Why don't you share with people how they can 
um, listen to your podcast, connect with you on social media and all of that fun stuff. Great. So my website is hollywharton.com and that's W-O-R-T-O-N. And that's got links to pretty much everything. So it's got links to my podcast, which is the Business Mindset Podcast. It's got links to all my social media. Um, I'm pretty much everywhere. So um, I would love to connect with anyone who's listening who would like to get in touch. So that's the best place to find me. Fantastic. And I will also put links to all of that goodness on the show notes page at kellycovert.com. Just click on the podcast tab. And I'm also going to make sure I made a note to link to my salary is good enough, the blog post, because <laughs> I loved it so much. And I am so glad that you, that you brought that up. And I really just want to honor and acknowledge you, Holly, right now. Thank you so much for sharing your wisdom with us. I feel that it's a wisdom that runs so deep, deeper than the nine years, 10 years you've been developing it. Mm. It's timeless. And I really feel that in your voice and I feel that in your energy. So thank you for bringing that to us and, and giving that to us today. Thank you for having me. It was such a fun conversation. Yes, I'm sure that we'll have more. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Isn't she just great? Like, she just gives me, there's something about the way she speaks and the way she describes things and like that little bit of an English accent that just, I don't know, I feel like it could sit under her wisdom for days and days. I love, love, love that she has this whole decluttering meditation that she shared that with us because it is so aligned with how I teach how to clear space too. And I just wanted to make sure to let you guys know if you are interested in that free journaling program that I have, you can find it at kellycover.com backslash journal. But really, Holly went through the exact thing there. So it's really just about getting all of the hot mess out of our head. So there's room. So there's room and space for us to hear our inner voice. The other piece of what she talked about that I think is so critical is this idea of doing the deep work. It's scary sometimes to do the deep work. And I think that we all feel that and we all know that. Just like when she was talking about when she did her silent retreat, how all of this stuff started coming up. And it can be really intimidating to get quiet and to finally hear the stuff that comes up. But but it's really when we do the deep work that we become who we truly are. We're really stepping into our true authentic self and we're laying aside all of the stories and all of the beliefs and all of our history of who we think we should be and all of the expectations of people in our lives. And we're just becoming us and we're amazing. And I just, I love how she really talked about how she had to do that deep work and we all have to do it. It's critical. And when you have that support crew around you, it makes it so much easier. Having friends that you can talk to, having a coach like Holly or a coach like me that can walk you through the steps that can teach you the tools and strategies that you need to do this deep work and that can hold you accountable for doing the deep work. Sometimes we don't need instruction on how, we just need someone to hold the space for us to do it and have that accountability as our scaffolding around us while we, while we do the work. So if you feel that you need that support, I really encourage you to head to my website and schedule a free discovery call or head to Holly's website and schedule a free discovery call, depending on what you need in your life. I feel that if you're a business owner, Holly is going to be right up your alley. And if you just need to connect with your inner voice, please go to my website, kellycovert.com and sign up for a free discovery call today and we can get you started together. We can get you started into this process of doing the deep work. 
So as always, as you were listening, if you were finding that you were nodding your head, that you were agreeing and saying, yes, 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 this is what I need to hear. I ask that you pay it forward and share this with your sisters, your mothers, your friends, your neighbors, because all women need to hear this message, the message that we have the wisdom that we need inside of us. And once we're clearing the space, once we're doing the deep work, we will be living our most amazing life. If you are finding value in listening to In Her Voice week after week, I would ask you to please consider becoming a patron of the show. It's so cool. You can donate starting monthly at $1 and up from there. So maybe you feel led to donate a dollar per month. Maybe it's 10, maybe it's 20. Whatever you can donate, this helps me to cover the cost of producing In Her Voice. And even more importantly, it helps me to broaden my reach. It helps me to hire people to help me get the word out, get the message of worthiness and listening to your inner voice out to even more women. And I am so thankful for each and every one of you who chooses to listen to inner voice each week, who chooses to be a worthy crusader. So if you want to support in her voice, you can head on over to kellycover.com backslash together, and you can get started right there. As always, I want to remind you that we need you. We need you shining in your full authentic self. We need you to do this deep work. And you know why we need that? Because you have something inside of you that is totally unique, that is totally amazing, that only you can give the world. You are worthy. 